Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast. I'm Joe DeLeo and with Ryan Roberts and back returning is Alex Gilstrap. We're talking about the edge class today going through a very talented group. We've highlighted some of the big names so far for them being Isaiah Foskey, Miles Murphy, Will Anderson, and Derek Hall. Alex, how was the vacation? Good. It was a nice little reset. Here we are uh, back in the grind of work. And mm. uh, here we are getting into the edge rushers, which is exciting. I I guess I missed out on the boring offensive lineman group. Yeah, you picked the, the <laughs> wonderful timing to jump out on when we were talking about guards last week. You, you treat you're like, oh, I'm a little behind on these guys. I'll hop in on the, I'll yeah. hop in well, on the next I was. Group. Well, and then too, I, I didn't realize in years past, we didn't split up guards and centers and y'all did that. And so kind of threw me for a loop and I just wasn't on top. It was of an it. effort by Ryan. It, well, it was just such a good center class, man. I didn't want to not talk about a few of those guys. It's a good center Fair class. Enough. Alex, where, where did you go to vacation? Not uh, I, I went to uh, Panama City in Florida. Wow. Beach. And that, that yeah. was more important than watching centers and guards. I know. You, you would think That's otherwise. Crazy, man. <laughs> Ryan goes on vacation, and after he's had drinks and been out to dinner, he, he goes back to the hotel at 8 and starts – start watching film i just, I just well, you, know, you, know, what the... you know what you know what is funny is on sunday we're leaving for myrtle beach for a week and mm-hmm. i still have to work <laughs> like i'm still Wait, working so i week. are you assume are we taking the week off then no this, I'll, this I'll be sunday you're leaving yeah this sunday i'm leaving but like i'm doing okay. my show on irish breakdown every day i'm writing articles yeah. like I'm, I'm not I'm still working man so we gotta we gotta touch base on that because yeah. I'm gonna be away for part of the week as well. So we gotta we gotta figure that out. Don't be a slacker, man. Don't I'm not gonna player. I'm not I'm not gonna be a slacker. But Friday, that we're not gonna do this on the show. But today we're talking edge. We're gonna go through all these our, our top five rankings each. Uh, before we get to that, though, folks, I want to tell you about our partners at Bet Online. Bet Online continues to be the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's Wimbledon Finals, Major League Baseball, and the latest fighting news, and even next season's early NFL futures. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to sign up to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, guys, I'm going to start us off here with my number five. I would like to allude my top five to to saying that it is going to be the most boring top five that I think I've done because it basically falls in line with the consensus. I I think for the most part, most people have an aligned top three. I think uh, for the most part, we're going to have the same three guys in the top three. We are not going to have any discourse at number one. I think four and five, there's a little bit more of a mix up. But my number five was Will McDonald the fourth from from Iowa State. Uh, just to keep him simple, because I think we're going to go really deep on him on the Friday show. I think he's got a really nice frame. I I, I really like the effort and the aggressiveness that he plays uh, at Iowa State. And the big thing for me, man, the pro- the production that he had last year, I didn't realize he was as productive as he was. And I think that to consider him to be a a, a round two draft pick, putting up twelve and a half sacks in the Big Twelve. Going up some uh, up against some some decent offensive linemen, like some of his best performances. I know that Texas offensive line is not very good. Oklahoma State has, you know, a decent quality offensive line. He goes up against Clemson as well. Some of his best performances weren't against the the sloppy teams on the schedule. Um, I think that Will McDonald certainly deserves to be in this top five discussion. Do either of you guys have McDonald in in your top fives? Yes, he is in my top five, but I can't talk about him quite yet, sir. Okay. But yes, he is. Yeah, I I, I was going to jump in here. I actually do not have uh, Will McDonald in my top five. He he fell just outside of it. He was in my – I made a list of guys that I thought could potentially be top five. And this really goes to the depth of this class. And you split y'all split up. We talked about y'all splitting up centers and guards in this, you know, this year's summer scouting. We really could have done that on traditional defensive ends and in like your outside linebacker hybrid pass rushers. Yeah. yeah there there mean, are some guys it's it's really weird. And there's one guy in particular I'm gonna talk about, I think that's a better outside linebacker. And I, you guys probably you could probably guess who that is, but sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, Ox. No, you're good. Uh because Will McDonald is someone that like I said, I wrote his name down with all intentions of thinking he was going to make my top five, but 
I just found five guys. This is just a really, really good class at the top overall. Um, so number five for me is actually Nolan Smith from Georgia. Um, so Nolan Smith, obviously number one recruit coming out of high school, goes to Georgia and doesn't really see much production from you. Don't see that top one caliber football player for the first couple of years. Uh, last year was the breakout after Azizo Jolari obviously moves on to the NFL and you had a couple of those uh, guys at Georgia come on, uh, move on to the NFL. Last year, Nolan Smith kind of frontlined uh, that defensive front along with Jalen Carter, who I'm sure we'll talk about next week, um, as some of the younger guys that were getting it done. And Nolan Smith really, I mean, he's always been a great run defender, and you've always seen that on tape. But in his 2021 film, you really saw his pass rush nuance just continue to build on itself. And I think Nolan Smith has really solidified himself as a – a 3-4 outside linebacker who I think I feel comfortable dropping into coverage, uh, and he did so with good efficiency last year. Um, I think he's become just a super well-rounded, safe player that you know is a, it, it can, can be a three-down player and continue to keep himself on the field. I really like Nolan Smith. Um, I, I know he's boring to be in the top five, but I think I think he has done a lot for himself as far as progressing throughout his collegiate career uh, to put himself in that conversation. Does, does his size worry you at all? Because, I mean, I'm looking at the verified measurements. He is a shade under six foot two. He's 237 pounds with sub 33 inch arms, only a six, eight wingspan. That's where my hesitation comes with, with Nolan Smith, just slightly, right. just slightly. Yeah, I mean, with with the size, I've always felt like he's longer than he measured. Like, I don't know, watching him on film, I feel like he uses his length despite mm -hmm. not having exceptional length and not, you know, uh, filling up that uh, part of his uh, measurements. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like as someone that's probably going to be an outside linebacker and be in coverage a little bit more, this the weight and the the height, I'm not as concerned about. Um, I, I think this guy could honestly even be an off ball linebacker. Kind of how I mean, not comparing to him, like a Sam, to yeah. This, yeah, like a Sam that that's gonna be in coverage, but uses a blitzer oftentimes as well. I think Nolan Smith, I, I think I think he can find a fit in the NFL. I think size isn't obviously something that you highlight and check the box and get really excited about, but I think it's good enough given what I think his role could be at the next level. I, well, I think I'll, this, I'll, yeah, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say I think the size thing is is definitely worth bringing up, but I, he was the guy I was just referring to as somebody who. I think provides almost more value as an outside linebacker than he does as an edge rusher. The guy's really freaking fluid and twitchy like that. There was one play against Michigan. I was watching him and he almost looked like, like a rubber band. He was able to, to contort his body so much. I see somebody who's able to slip through, through blockers. Uh, the big value for me, because I just didn't see crazy impact as, an edge rusher he doesn't have a lot of moves doesn't a lot have a lot of play strength because he's a lighter player but he really tracks the football well and i think this is a really fast player probably going to be a 4-4 athlete which should be the case for a lighter edge rusher but he flies all over the field like him in as a run defender it's fantastic i think he, this is more of an outside linebacker than a, than an edge rusher and a part of me wonders if he deserves to be more in the linebacker show, but Alex was 100% right in saying that we could have totally split this up into three, four outside linebackers and uh, traditional defense events. Yeah, he's a one. My favorite thing about him, Alex, is and to your point, Joe, I mean, he's an incredibly twitchy player. I love how physical he is against the run, mm, man. He's got some yeah. heavy hands. I'm like, oh, all right. He, he sets an edge, you know, pretty well. So I, I do kind of agree with you, Alex. I think, and to your point as well, Joe, it's the like, in about 10, 15 years ago, it's probably a Sam linebacker that's going to play on the line of scrimmage a little bit, right? Like you're probably mm -hmm. going to use both aspects of that game because he can set the edge. I agree. He's not a natural pass rusher. He's definitely got some explosiveness to him. He's twitchy, but he doesn't have a, a true plan as a pass rusher. But Joe, I love when you said rubber bands because that leads me perfectly into my ah. number five. It's perfect segue, man. Andre Carter, I knew that was the second. Ooh, yes, out of Army, which Joe, I know. Um, Corey Kinnon told me the highest drafted player ever from a naval, from a uh, military academy. Excuse me, was Mike Wall, who I think is on the Believe in NFL Draft process. Yeah. Oh no, no, the, oh, no. He's on the Believe Network. He hosts our Packers show. Yes. Oh, Mike I just Wall. said NFL Draft process. I'm an idiot. Sh yes. Shout yes. out to Mike Wall. Yeah. So he was drafted in the second round, and I believe. 
that Andre Carter has a chance to go top 50, top 64, mm. 100%, man. 6'6", 255 pounds, 34-inch arms. This kid was made in an on another planet and somehow was a zero-star recruit going to Army, right? Where and the hell is he from? He is from, I think we have it in the database. Do we have hometown? Antarctica? Is that how you get, it gets away <laughs> uh, from being? Outside being Houston. Re- I, oh, is he from outside of Houston? Wow. Yeah, really? That's, that's you, weird. It, yeah. What the hell? He must be all from I, like the smallest town in Texas. All I know is I broke down the Walter Camp All-American list, and I went to look back at the recruiting ba- backgrounds, and he was a zero star across the board. Did not have a single star to his name as a recruit. And he is – I mean, he looks out of place at Army because you know how mm. the military academies are, right? Like a bunch of good football players, but they're all smaller usually, right? Like it's, yeah. it's just kind of how it works. Stocky. This and kid is yeah, – small- Stocky, meaty guys. <laughs> exactly. This guy, though, is long, man. All <laughs> arms and legs. And he has, for 6'6", some of the craziest bend that I've ever seen, man. Like, this kid can dip under a table. He's got a ghost move. He's got natural bend to him to be a true outside rusher. Length to, to you know, work in the run game as far as having a large tackle radius. Now, he needs to improve his power profile. There is no doubt about that. But this kid is explosive, he's twitchy, and he's bendy. So I'm in on Andre Carter the second. And he led the nation with like – actually, I think he was second behind Will Anderson. I think he had like 15 or 16 sacks last year. Like just a fantastic season. Extremely nutty. Alex, before you go in on him, because I did admittedly have not completed my evaluation on him, my theory, Ryan, and I would love for somebody to, to do an interview with him, I am now intrigued to reach out to their sports information department and ask if we can get availability for him, um, which is usually pretty hit or miss. Maybe I'm, I'm, already, I'm already in front of you on that one, sir. Uh, it, so is there a possibility that we get him? Should I not reach there's, out? There's a strong possibility that we can get him. Yep. So I should not reach out to the sports. You don't need department. to. You do okay. not need to. Nope. I want you to ask if you do get him because my assumption, and this is what happened with Jeremy Chin when I spoke to him a couple of years ago, I'm willing to bet he was like a very late bloomer, which tends to be the case. I'd be willing to bet this he was probably a couple inches shorter and a lot lighter when he got to Army, and he probably filled out into his frame and probably grew a little bit by the time he got onto the field. Like That's probably what happened here because that's the only logical thing that would make sense for a guy with that physical profile coming out of Texas unless he just didn't play football and was playing basketball his whole time, something along those lines. I'm going to look no. him up. I'm going to look up a little deeper into it. Go okay. ahead, Alex. Ryan, I will say, you you mentioned this briefly, but you turn on Army football. There's no <laughs> doubt who Andre Carter is. He stands out every <laughs> single play. He, he also wears number 34 playing defensive end, which is pretty awesome. hysterical. Hey, this honestly. is a horrible year for edge rush numbers, by the way. This is, is one it? of the worst well, years. Well, we had, we had Will Anderson, 31. We Derek about Hall's 29. Derek Hall, 29. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least we got Isaiah Foster wearing seven. Yeah. Nolan Smith um, wearing four. There's some good right. numbers. I think yeah. Tyree yeah. Wilson from Texas Tech's moving to three. Good. Uh-huh. Which is pretty yeah. fun. But, right. yeah, fun. no, it, I, I'll, I'll start there. I mean, it's just this guy just looks like, you, you mentioned it, an alien compared to what you typically see at Army. And I was – I uh, saw his name towards the top of like some some rankings before getting into anyone's film, and I was like, that one's gonna be interesting to watch <laughs> because I'm expecting, like you said, Joe, short, undersized, but like super thick, like mm. you know, athlete here uh, that just is you know well rounded, just smart football player, football IQ through the roof. That's what I was expecting, and man, I got an alien. So really excited about Andre Carter as well. I'm glad you have him in your top five, Ryan. Like I was expecting like a work ethic guy. Like I yeah, was expecting like a, yeah. a lunch pail work nope. ethic guy that's that's like 6'2", 250. Not to say he doesn't just, have the work ethic, but just, that being the prominent yeah. trait. Right, but like the cliche army players is, right. like, is like, this guy's a lunch pail guy. He comes to work every day, but he's he's a freak athlete. I, I remember seeing him at one point. He was leading the nation in sacks last year, and I clicked on his profile just on like ESPN, and it lists him at like 6'7", 260. I'm like, at army? What are, what are we <laughs> doing here? That doesn't make any was sense. Is he on the basketball but... team or something? I don't think so, man. I don't mm-hmm. think so. I, I think his father also was like a college football player. So like, I'm very, I'm very mm. confused as to why he was not rated at all. I am Andre. If you listen to this, I'm praying that you come on the show because I think that would be the coolest interview to get to hear from sure. you. Uh, let's, let's Agreed. start the, the campaign for Andre Carter in the first round. 
I do have to say, though, to properly transition us, my number four was Nolan Smith. And I think th- I he was just so hard to really figure out in, in the sense of, like, where the hell am I going to put him? Uh, like, I, I remember watching Lorenzo Carter, and I'm not saying he's a parallel to Len- Lorenzo Carter, but Lorenzo Carter was, was an edge rusher at Georgia. And then he goes to the NFL, and the whole time watching him in the New York Giants defense, I kept thinking to myself, like, this guy's fast, this guy's fluid, but he's not a natural pass rusher. I'd rather he be playing Sam. I'm not saying that Nolan Smith is that, but I kept asking myself, is this guy meant to be playing off the edge, especially because he's not built really to do it right now? Now, if he goes into the season over 235, if he's 250 and well-built and well-put together, doesn't sacrifice much of the speed, I think I can I can put those qualms away. Maybe he didn't need to fit that role because of all the guys that he has, or sorry, that Georgia has. Now he has to step up more. I'm sure they're going to ask him to take on different responsibility. Uh, you were mentioning Ryan with Nolan Smith, that he's a really aggressive run de- defender. The tone that he sets against the run is impactful on a down to down basis. I don't get the same thing as an edge rusher. I feel like he's not as, uh, as aggressive. It's almost like he gets stopped and like the play's kind of dead. I think this could be an outside track rusher because of his speed. And I don't know why he doesn't make more efforts to try and beat guys all the way around uh, and, and, and off the edge. Like, I feel like he's going straight at offensive tackles that are much stronger than him than if he used his speed and his bend, which is pro- maybe the best in the class, that bend that he has. I, I Just a little weird of an evaluation because he has the traits but just does not know how to use it yet. Yeah, no, I mean, he's definitely more athlete as a pass rusher than, than complete player. There's no doubt about it. Joe, did I ever tell you I, I interviewed Nolan Smith in person when he was in high school at IMG Academy? Is that's mm-hmm. another one of those guys that that you, yeah, uh, Kyle Dude, that, Hamilton. That class was Wagner. nutty, man. No, I went down to IMG for the media day. Quick story: that senior class was Nolan Smith, Evan Neal, um, Trey Sanders, <laughs> Noah Kane. Like what, brother? Like there are so many dudes in this class. It didn't make any sense, but yeah, he was a. Uh, it was an interesting interview. I think I have to talk about off the air on that one. But oh no, you got, you got uh, if, if I can though, I want to backtrack for a second because you just had your number four was Alex's number five. I actually had your number five, Joe, as my number four. That's one ah, of the okay. Okay, go ahead. I know that was really confusing what I just said there, but I I have a little crush on Will McDonald. If we're being oh, that's honest, so cute. man. I know, brother, he is an odd body type, but this is my style, right? Like, yeah. I love those outside track rushers with Bend, yeah. and that is Will McDonald to a T. 6'4", came in at 226 during spring grades, mm. but Joe, 34 and 5 eighth inch arms, man. The dude has some silly length, and I, if you look up his background as a track and field athlete, he was a 6'4 high jumper. He was a 180 foot discus thrower and he was like a 50 foot shot putter, dude. Like this guy is and a 22 plus foot long jumper too. Like he was a silly track and field athlete and that explosiveness pops on film. I will say this though. And you didn't mention this when you talked about him. I hate so much how they use him in that system. They yeah. put three down and they mm-hmm. put him at like a four tech. Most of the time, I'm just like, guys, <laughs> 230 pounds, what are we doing? Because this guy is a true outside track winner, man. He's explosive. Mm-hmm. He's bendy. Some of the best bend I've ever seen. Like this kid can, re- I mean, his ankle flexion is insane working the outside track. So I'm a big Will, and- uh, Will McDonald fan, man. I was said Will Anderson. I'm a big Will Anderson fan as well. But Will McDonald's, campaign started joe first round pick will mcdonald let's do it he he looks heavier than nolan smith and the fact that you said that he was 226 man must have been he's 11 pounds lighter 11 showing a little too much during the during the off season (laughs) it's no will mcdonald will mcdonald felt like the lighter (laughs) for me i felt like will mcdonald Uh, looked a little too thin uh whereas mm. whereas i didn't get that that w- that was like the one downfall i had on him which is i mean if that's going to be your downfall going to the nfl you can you can solve that issue if that if that comes to be an issue uh mm-hmm. no i like will mcdonald we already touched on him i mean he's he's splashy like he makes some fun ath- he's acrobatic brian burns ish with his athleticism i mean mm. talk it's about just, comp. yeah comp. i mean just it, it, as far as like thin frame but outside track like he can get it done in multiple ways um you know, with his athleticism. So I really like Will McDonald just goes to show, like I said, the top of this class, just so freaking deep. Alex, who you got a number four. Did we get oh, to your number it's my four? My turn. Yeah. 
Um, so Ryan, you mentioned like your little random, like, uh, I had your five at four and so on and so forth. Your number five is my number four. Nice. I got my man, Andre Carter. I, I, I'm glad you touched on him cause it made me feel even better about having him at number four, but Andre Carter is freaky, freaky. <laughs> I'm big fan of it. Like I just, every single play, like I, th- th- I just had an exciting time watching this player. I think if there's really anything to hang your hat on that he needs to, do a little bit better. I, I feel like he he missed a couple tackles in the backfield that he could have had. He could have had more sacks uh, to his resume. I felt like he needed to do a better job there. But, I mean, he is in the backfield with consistency. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, that's just a player we talked about at the beginning of the show, and I know we're about to get into it. The top three in some order, flip-flop two and three, however you want to put it, is how most people are going to have their top three. And it really comes down to who's that next guy. And for me, Andre Carter was on a podium next to the rest mm. of the class. I really, really had a good time watching his film. Yeah. No, he's he's fun, man. He is fun. So I guess it's safe to say, though, that we do have the same top threes in some capacity, huh? I think that's yeah, I would I would be shocked if, if everybody here doesn't have a similar top three. I'm willing to throw out there that we all have the same players at one, two, and three. So let's find this out right mm. now. At number Do three it. for me is Miles Murphy from Clemson. Does that fit everybody else's pick? He's my number three as well. He's yep. my number three. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. So Miles Murphy, I think, is is interesting in the equation of this because we're, we're talking about all these outside track guys, these freaky, fluid, long athletes that are a little bit more nuanced and speed to their game. And Miles Murphy is the one guy who doesn't really fit that description for these edge rushers. This is a much bigger, heavier defensive end, a traditional four, three edge rusher. Part of me wonders if you asked him to bulk up a little bit to maybe like 280, 285, could he play that three, four defensive end role? I think that he has the strength and the power to do so the one description that i used for miles murphy when we evaluated him on the previous show ryan you remember is that he he almost has this boxer's mentality to pass rushing very aggressive hard hitting hands he uses his power effectively i almost you don't even know how fast he is sometimes because all he's using and focusing on is using that power profile i think that it, it, there is something to be said about that in a team that likes to run four down on every single play is going to be obsessed with a guy like miles Murphy. He is just such a good player, man. I mean, this is an Alex for our show yesterday. When we compared them, I made this claim. I think that he is what people tried to make Trayvon Walker like last mm-hmm. year, you know, like he's oh, yeah. a, I like he's that. a, he's a four, three defensive end, which awesome. But also, to Joe's point, if you want to run some multiple fronts and you want to bring him down to playing a 4-4-I, four, 5-whatever, five, five, yeah. he can do those things. And then on third downs, you can move him into three tech even. Yeah. Like, and he could do that type of stuff, right? And I think that there's a lot of sub-package possibilities. My only criticism of – well, my main criticism of him is that he's not a true outside track guy, right? So, like, yeah. he's going to have to win with a long arm or power, and then he's going to hit some inside counters, which is fine, but it's just not going to be – for everyone is the point right like this kid is a slam dunk first round pick 6'5 275 he can move he's explosive outside of the Syracuse game every game I watched he was just disruptive consistently I thought Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse had a really nice game against him everybody else I thought struggled against Miles Murphy Mm -hmm. and the best part is is I don't think he's near his ceiling man he is according to our database he is still 20 years old he is only he's going to be 21 at the end of this upcoming football season, in um, excuse me, in January, he'll be turning 21 years old. So he'll be a 21 year old rookie for his entire rookie season, right. except for the playoffs if his team makes the playoffs. So this kid is a high upside <laughs> young defensive end who absolutely looks the part. I am all in on Miles Murphy. Well, I, I mean, I don't know how y'all feel about this, but let's go back to the Trayvon Walker conversation. We have him ranked at number three. I think I've taken Miles Murphy right now over Trayvon Walker. Yes, I agree. It's just more so, consistency. Trayvon Walker was so goddamn inconsistent, which is what annoyed the crap out of me out of the sudden last second buzz for him. <laughs> right. No, I mean, you might not have the the freaky athletic testing numbers uh, that Trayvon Walker was able to put up, but I think as a football player in between the hashes, this guy is an animal. I mean, 
he, he, he's a bull that will just run through every offensive guard or tackle, depending on who he's going up against. Uh, I mean, it, it was just, it was, it was so much fun to watch. He, he does this, like you said, Ryan, he's not an outside track guy. And, and Joe, you started to mention this, adding some weight, like, could this guy be just an absolute rarity at like the four tech or, you know, even three tech at that in some packages, probably because this guy, he has some, Great athleticism for his size, and like you said, Ryan, as a pass rusher, I don't even think he's hit his ceiling yet, and I think he he has plenty in the tank. Um, and with his size and his strength, where he's like in a league of his own in college football right now with his play strength, I think he's super, super exciting. I think this is a top 15, top 12 pick in the draft easily. That, that front seven is just so nutty, man, because I know next week we'll be talking about Brian Brissy. The week after we'll be talking about Trenton Simpson, the linebacker. Like, just man, it, it's it's not going to be fun to play against that Clemson defense. Who's year. their their token crappy athlete linebacker? Is it Ben <laughs> Bulware? No, they the actually they one. actually have a that's good the athlete. I, they have a good athlete that's now playing linebacker next to Trenton Simpson. They have who? this young kid. Um, his last name's McGuire. Keith McGuire, I think. He's like Wait, a, but who is the other guy that they had? Oh, the, they had they had they had last year. They had Balen Specter and James Skalski. They were Skalski. Yeah, he's yeah, gone Skalski's now, right? He's hey, gone. I, yeah, man. But he was a good college player, man. James Skalski was a good player. Why are you rolling we, your eyes? We, we need <laughs> our slow, clunky Mike linebacker to play on that Clemson defense. He ran like four seven. How dare you call that's, him slow? You you think that's not slow and clunky for a compared to Mike you linebacker? running a five two? I I am a long snapper and also was not good enough of an athlete to get much of an opportunity. That's a different. You can't compare me to him. He's supposed oh, to be man. a linebacker in the ACC. I was an, at an FCS. He was school. a good player. He was a good player. Eh, whatever. It it's just funny that Clemson always has those clunky ass. Uh, they do. They do. They all have. You know, Balen Balen Specter got drafted, didn't he? <laughs> the other one. Doesn't surprise me. Teams do so stupid weird. stuff. So, weird. all right, everybody's number two. Isaiah Foskey from Notre Dame. Long. <laughs> yep. As... I was waiting for Alex. I was waiting no. for Alex to be like, "Nope, don't have him in my top five. I've got some money. <laughs> Bill else. Anderson. Got some, two. <laughs> he's got some random Georgia player in there. <laughs> DJ Ojolari. Number. Two. Oh no. What's his name? Um, who's the other? Robert Beal. Right. Is the other Georgia uh, Edge. Uh, is that even worth the conversation? <laughs> uh, <laughs> going. Rip. Uh, so Foskey though was a really fun evaluation because they used him all over the place was not on the field as much as I think we would have liked. And I think in the uh, Al golden era of Notre Dame defense, he is going to be more consistently used as an edge rusher. But the thing that I liked about Foskey is that you can almost use him like a Micah Parsons where you can bounce him around. He can play in the middle of the field, not that great, but he can, play in the middle of the field you can blitz him up the a gap up the b gap anywhere you want to and he's effective enough as a pass rusher to beat guys in those situations his long arm is deadly but the length the size is is something that is just so rare to find for an edge rusher he deserves to be at that number two spot slotting him as a as an eventual top 15 pick I think so, too. And I'm going to give Alex most of the floor because obviously we talked about him more in depth yesterday. All I'll say is he was a raw player, former high school tight end, was recruited mostly as a tight end. Notre Dame won him as a defensive end. Last year was his first full year as a starter. Insane length, explosiveness, but he's still figuring it out, which is the exciting part. This kid, I think, has top 10 to 15 upside. So that's, yeah, that's quick, quick cliff notes. If you want more in depth, go back to the last episode. Yeah, I think if you ask any, let's just say, college football analyst to rank college football players at this edge rusher position, Isaiah Foskey's top five, right? No, no matter how which way you swing mm-hmm. it, not talking about him as a prospect and all that, just as a college football player. Yep. He's rare in multiple ways. He's rare with his length. His length is rare. His speed and his explosiveness, which you just commented on, Ryan, mm-hmm. rarity. And you mentioned he hasn't put it all together yet. So his question marks are ceiling. That's that's a question mark. What is his ceiling? Because it could be it could be through the roof. I don't know what his ceiling is because athletically this guy is rare. <laughs> like he is so much fun to watch. And and I just really, really I, I didn't expect him. I, I don't know why, but thinking Notre Dame, I think I'm getting this like heavy set defensive end that's borderline defensive tackle. Like I don't know what I was Except expecting. To it. Right, right. Or Sheldon and, Day. Yeah, yeah. Stephon Stewart's a good day. one. Oh, God. Sheldon Day. All right. This is deep um, pool. 
Yeah, it wasn't, but that, I, it wasn't that deep, man. If you would have said like Capron Lewis more, Derek Landry, then I would have been Lewis impressed. Moore. Yeah. Also, R.I.P. He's that's not the that's he's still alive. You're thinking of Lewis Dix. No, I was oh, talking about Lewis Moore. No, no, no. no. Yeah, yeah, Alex, I did Alex I did. I said. Did. I uh, yeah, it was also it was Caprin Lewis Moore. Oh my God, get Capron. off this show, dude. Get off my show. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. I'm sorry about him. No, no worries. You know, Isaiah Foskey's just a really, really fun football player. Uh, I think he's better pass rusher than run defender right now. I, I'm not really worried about him as a run defender. Uh, but what you pay defensive ends or what you want defensive ends to do is sack the quarterback and Isaiah Foskey. He can do that right now. I can't imagine once he gets some, you know, con- continues to mature as a pass rusher because this guy, this guy could be a, a double digit sack guy for a long time. Fourth year player coming up here who has going to be Joe. You know what's funny is he's he's going to be a redshirt junior technically, and he still has the COVID year, so he can come back for three more years if he wanted. Yeah, to. I hate that. <laughs> I absolutely hate that. That that's a thing. But despite being a fourth-year player coming up, he's still only 21 years old. So good the point of upside is immense with him. He is a child. Uh, Will Anderson, though, is our obvious number one, which I don't think any of us are going to sit here and disagree. To wrap him up nicely in a bow, because we spent so much time talking about him on the first episode, we kind of breezed through Derek Hall justifiably. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. think he deserved as much recognition as we gave him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I, for me, he is so strong. He is. He has rare strength for his size profile at, at six foot three, two hundred and forty five pounds. We talked about that comparison of him to Von Miller and the impact that Von Miller has had early on in in his career and throughout the entirety of his career as a veteran edge rusher that strength coupled with the best motor out of the edge class makes him a generational talent. There should, it should not be a hot take to consider a guy like Will Anderson as generational. And I would be shocked if he makes it out of the top three. The only thing that's going to make him outside of the top three is if the first two picks are CJ Stroud and then Bryce young and then the third pick ends up being uh, Will Anderson in this circumstance. But I think of a team that doesn't need a quarterback's pick at a number one, this man's the first overall pick in this upcoming class. I think this. I think Will Anderson's so good that even if a team picking number one needs a quarterback, they would still think about drafting Will Anderson over one of the yeah. two quarterbacks, to be honest. like I think that he's that good. We always talk about the sack numbers. He also had 81 total pressures last year. Like, just yeah. absurd. What? <laughs> 81 total pressures last year, man, on top of the sacks that he was able to accumulate. The kid is just a freaky athlete, plays hard, super physical. And again, we talked about him this week in our first show. So if you want a little more in-depth information about that, you can go there. I'm just kind of doing a quick cliff note kind of count on that one because I want to give Alex, obviously, the floor to give the his full opinion on, on Will Anderson. Yeah, I, you mentioned 81 total pressures, and that sounds like a big number. But to put that in perspective, all of our number two ranked guy, Isaiah Foskey, 32 to 81. Holy I mean, crap. it's 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 just different with Will Anderson. It's just different. And – there's some guys that are, you know, he he obviously led the nation in sacks and and was the front line of you know uh, pass rush in college football last year. Um, there's some guys that do that by just dominating some low level opponent. Uh, we saw this with um, Felix uh, Anudik Anud- Anudike Uzoma, the K- the Kansas State kid, yeah. Kansas State kid. Yeah, watch his yep. TCU game. I think he put up like six sacks in one game. Uh, yeah, that's uh, what's uh, what's the, what's the uh, what's the offensive tackle that he transferred from? Oh, I have no idea. Obina Easy was the offensive tackle. He was at oh. Memphis that he transferred to TCU and he got drafted, dude. Yeah, I was gonna say he was like, like an NFL draft pick. I think he got, I think he gave up four or five of those sacks to Felix, man. Like, I think they call him King Felix, by the way. Which is if a King Felix player. can that's put it together, name. King Felix is a dog. Um, another name I wrote down thinking he might potentially push into my top five, but Will yeah. Anderson's just one of those. Steady Eddie, he's going to get you two to three sacks a game, every game. It doesn't matter who he's playing, and there's a lot of value in that. I mean, this guy comes to play. It doesn't matter if he's playing, you know, in the college football playoff at the, at the tallest stage 
Or when he's playing the lower level opponents, he's not playing by the end of the second quarter because that's just Alabama football. So think about this guy playing a full game against, you know, a UConn or, you know, some of these teams that these these edge rushers are able to beat up on. If he's able to play a full <laughs> game, this guy's numbers would be ridiculous. Like he'd probably have 30 sacks because yeah. I think there were three or four games in uh, this past year that Will Anderson was didn't play the second half. Like he yeah. just didn't have to play the second half. Yeah, New, New Mexico State, Southern Miss. Yeah, and I think there was one more. There was one more. Yeah, and so I mean, it's just different with Will Anderson. This guy's going to be a consistent player at the next level, I believe. He's already doing it right now. He doesn't. He doesn't have off games. He doesn't have those games where you're like, "Wow, he really disappeared." He is the focal point of offensive line coaches and and you know the offensive scheme at the college football level. He is being double teamed. He's being chipped. Yet he is continuing, doesn't matter who he's playing, he will get you your two to three sacks every single game. And 81 pressures over the course of a, what, 15-game season for Alabama if they're going to the national championship? I mean, this guy's in the backfield, I mean, a handful of times every single game at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just different. It's just different with a Will Anderson. It is yeah, I, I, we, we need to stop over. I don't think anyone should over. Not, not that anyone's overthinking him. There was one person who had a stupid take on Twitter that I saw, but – Please don't nobody overthink him. He did just like exactly like Ryan said. If you're one of those teams picking in the top two, you should have a legitimate conversation about picking him over taking CJ Stroud. I, I think that he is that impactful. Maybe you decide to wait on drafting a quarterback unless you're the Detroit Lions. <laughs> and I, I'm sure I'm sure y'all brought this up when y'all talked about him in greater detail. Expect regression. We're talking yes. about these goofy numbers. Yeah. We're we're talking about these goofy numbers he put up last year. I mean, that's like all time numbers. He's it, to replicate that, it would be absolutely ridiculous. So if his numbers come down and he say he gets twelve sacks and only has fifty pressures, which is still ridiculous. I don't want to see double being, teaming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, I mean, he's he is the focal point of of you know the head coaches, you know, and offensive coordinators and trying to scheme against this Alabama defense. He mm -hmm. is who they focus on trying to, you know, get away from the play. What am I trying to say? Neutralize. Neutralize Will Anderson is the is the thought here. So, um, no, I, I you're going to get regression, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't, don't pull him down draft boards because he doesn't perform at the level he did in 2021. Joe, quick shout-outs. We got time? No. We don't? Darn. All right, you got a couple of shout-outs, and then we're wrapping. Go ahead. All right, uh, a couple guys that nearly made the list. I wanted to shout out someone that Alex said, Felix Anudike Uzoma, the Kansas State edge, yep. 6'4", 253. He's more of a hand technician, but he is extremely fluid in violence. I like him a ton. We talked about Derek Hall from Auburn, who I think has a lot of tools to work with. Tyree Wilson is one of the more interesting evaluations I've watched so far. Texas Tech, he's raw, but my man is 6'6". 270, 270 plus pounds, 35 and five eighth inch arms, Joe, seven, two wingspan. My guy mm. is long. And then I think Alex mentioned BJ Ojolari, who is only tw just turned two months ago, 20 years old. So he is a young yeah. guy, young guy. So good family guys lineage there out. with Aziz Ojolari, brother. Yes. Zion ZTF. We have to mention from Washington had a stupid 2020 towards Achilles. See if he can bounce back now that he's fully healthy. He came back late last year. Yep. Um, don't love his his tools necessarily, but, I mean, this is someone that put up some stupid production in that COVID year. So just someone to keep your eye on. And then Zach Harrison is someone that we've been talking about for six years. Has a lot of tools. We'll see if he can finally, finally put it together. Might have the Desmond Ritter conversation where it's like, when is he going to put it on? Or Kellen Mond. When is he going to put it together? He has all the tools in the world, but never really does so. Joe, quick, quick, quick uh, stat on Zach Harrison. 6'6", 266, 35 and three quarter inch arms, 7'3", wingspan, the biggest wingspan that we have in the database. My guy at that size coming out of high school ran a 10'7 in the 100 meter, and he ran it in boots. Why the Go hell was he wearing boots? He didn't have track shoes. He was in boots. Go barefoot. <laughs> well, he ran 10'7 in boots. So. That's... That's pretty nutty. Toolsy. <laughs> All right. I think that's good enough to wrap us up on at Joe DeLeon, at Rise and Draft, at Alex Skills Trap, at NFL Prospects Pod, and then Hack City on YouTube. Talk to you later, folks. Enjoy the rest of your week.